Well, it looks like spring is finally here. We've got a lot more to show you coming up next. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to the show. Well, as you can see, spring is, well, it's popping up everywhere. I'm here in the Argenta Arts District where we've planted 25,000 pink tulip bulbs for a very special occasion. I'll tell you more about that in a little while. Also in today's show, we'll talk about early, mid, and late blooming tulips, vegetables that are salad ready, and we'll take a look at last summer's rose garden. Plus, I'll answer a viewer question and show you how to make this wonderful mint and strawberry smoothie. Well, as you can see, we've got a lot going on in today's show, and we'll get started right after the break. As I mentioned earlier, I'm here in the Argenta Arts District, where I've partnered with the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, to plant 25,000 pink tulip bulbs to honor families and victims of breast cancer in an event called Planet Pink. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of death among cancer deaths in women. It's just vital we find a cure. You see, we've planted 28 individual beds and 50 containers filled with these beautiful tulips. All of the proceeds raised for this project go to the Susan G. Komen Foundation. Their organization is the global leader of the breast cancer movement, having invested nearly $1.5 billion to breast cancer research since its inception in 1982. Not only are we working hard to find a cure for breast cancer, but we're adding a touch of beauty to this wonderful cityscape. You see, the color pink is nationally recognized as the color for breast cancer awareness. It's a, it's a color assigned to the tulip that represents compassion, caring, and consideration. A beautiful idea. After this quick break, I'll meet you back at the farm and we'll talk about tulips and planting a salad-ready vegetable garden, so stay tuned. You know, there's something about color that I just love. As an artist, I love to paint. As a gardener, I love to paint with flowers. And that's what we're doing here with these tulips. Aren't they magnificent? They really herald the spring. And what I've done here is I've combined lots of different tulips, four in fact, and what you see here first flowering is one called Negrita, that's the purple one, followed by one called Silver Stream that has yellows with apricot in them. And then these will be followed by two other varieties, one called Rosalie and another one called Pink Impression. Now the idea here is to create a harmonic color balance and plant with abundance. And that's what we've done here. In this bed alone, I've planted about 250 bulbs. And in front of it, you can see lots of different annuals. You see, the idea here is to produce continuous bloom, and the annuals certainly help with that. And those colors harmonize with what I have planted at the back of the bed in the way of tulips. And then what's gonna come after the tulips will be some of these beautiful delphiniums. This bed is only two feet by 20 feet long. And you can really pack a lot of color and a lot of visual interest in a small space like this. If you look closely at some of the annuals, you'll see some familiar favorites and maybe some that aren't so familiar to you, like Lobularia, Verbena, Nemesia, and Pansies and Violas. And what they all have in common, other than the colors harmonize with one another, is that they can take cool temperatures. They're considered cool weather annuals, which work beautifully in concert with these tulips. I just can't tell you how much I enjoy having salad-ready vegetables planted really close to my kitchen door. Last fall, I pulled together this container of fresh salad ingredients. Let's have a look. I want to show you how to make something that's beautiful and very useful. I'm going to plant a trio of containers all in lettuce. Yes, lettuce that you can harvest and use for a beautiful salad. Now, I'm not only going to use three containers, I'm going to use three different varieties of salad greens. I'm going to use arugula, I'm going to use butter crunch lettuce and romaine lettuce. Now, I love to grow lettuce here in my Mid-South garden, zone seven. I can grow it in the spring and I can grow it in the fall. It doesn't like the heat. But if you live in an area of the country where you have cool summers, you can grow it all through the summer. And if you live in the deep south, like Florida, you can grow lettuce during the winter. So why don't we get started? 
As you can see, I'm using a clay container, just a classic shape. This is a 20 inch in diameter container, and I have a saucer under each of the three containers that I'm planting. Now in this first one, I'm going to plant arugula. As you can see, there are three or four healthy plants in this container. This is a biodegradable container, and all I do is take off the plastic wrapper like this. And then take out the tag, and then I like to pinch off just this little bit of peat moss. This is a peat container, and I just place them in the container here. Now you can see I filled this container almost full with a potting soil that's specifically blended for container gardening, and that's very important. Now what I'm going to do is just go through each one of these arugula plants, like this. There are about five plants to each container, and with four plants, it gives me about 20 arugula plants, which you can imagine will produce an abundance of salad greens. All right, now as you can see, I have all of them in the container now, and I'm just going to take some of this potting mix and fill in between the individual biodegradable pots that are housing or holding the arugula. And that's really all you have to do. You just want to make sure that you fill in between. And what's nice about these peat pots is that they just decompose and become a part of the soil mixture. Okay, now with the arugula finished, let's move over here and let's plant this container full of romaine. Now I've got these uh, cell packs of plants here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide a few plants out like this. You just be very gentle with them. And I will plant them in a circle. And even though the plants are small, you just can't believe how quickly they'll respond to their new home. And what I try to do is I try to break up just a little bit of the soil around the plant. Uh, sometimes it grows, the roots grow in the form of the cell pack, and you just want to loosen that just a little bit. Go ahead and get these in. It just takes a few minutes to plant these. It's really quite amazing. Now, to finish this out, I'm going to do my last container with buttercrunch lettuce, one of my favorites. Now there's some things I want you to remember about this whole process. You see it's as easy as one, two, three. First, you want to make sure that you place these containers in an area where they get at least six hours of sunlight. When you harvest, you want to pinch the outer leaves of the salad greens first, leaving the center part. And third, when you spray for any possible insects or problems you may have, use something that's safe, safe for you, your family, and your pets. And the last thing, just have fun with this. You can make a beautiful accent out on your deck, terrace, or patio, or by your entryway, and it's also very delicious. Okay, now after the break, we're gonna check in on the roses on the east lawn. <laughs> They're really showing out. And then I'll answer a viewer question, so stay with us. You know, it's just remarkable to me how well this particular flower bed has done. I mean, it's just not even a year old. And it's a testimony, I think, to good soil preparation, making the right choice on the soil amendments, as well as making the right choices for the plants. When we started this bed, we just worked up the basic soil we had here, and we plowed in lots of ProMix with mics. And that's a mycorrhizae that's very beneficial to the root growth of plants. And so that's the way this bed was prepared. And the next thing we did is we planted the entire back of it with knockout roses. It was just about 10 months ago I was here with Steve Hutton. We just had planted it. Steve is the president of Conard Pile Roses, the nursery responsible for distributing the knockout rose throughout the country and making it available in garden centers. And then we came in in the spring, once the roses had settled over the winter, and planted all of these magnificent annuals. And you can see this is a flowering basil, one called African Blue. And at its feet, you can see my old friend, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum Pink. And then this gorgeous foliage plant, a sun-tolerant coleus called Amora. Now, what's wonderful about a foliage plant like this is that you see it in juxtaposition to all of these blooms, and you really need it, I think, for the flowers to really be set off. We also have a very tiny flowering summer snapdragon, or angelonia. This one's called angel face wedgewood. It has a beautiful sort of pale blue to it. 
Now there's one other thing I want to point out. It's a shrub at the back. It's a budlia or butterfly bush. And this one's called Miss Ruby. And what I like about her is that it, she stays small. She doesn't get really big and rangy like some of the budlia varieties. What I love about butterfly bush, as its name implies, it attracts lots of butterflies. And this African blue basil, you can't believe all the honeybees on it. It feels good to plant things in the garden that are a benefit to some of the little creatures around. So what do we have here? We have a bed that was prepared with good soil. We chose the right plants, and here in the middle of the heat of summer, it's thriving. It's time for viewer questions, and I have one here from Nadine in Georgia, and she says, you know, I really want to start a vegetable garden this year, but I'm concerned about pests. Alan, are st there's some things that I can do to deal with insects and some of the other problems. Well, that's a really great question, and I'm glad that you're thinking about growing vegetables and growing them in an organic way. I will tell you that one of the products that we have used is neem oil, and it's, a, it's very, very good. I think that it's something that will help you as you get started with your garden. I don't know about you, but I really enjoy the summer months. If for no other reason than for all that delicious tasting bounty that can come out of the garden, this time of year, we're getting all kinds of eggplant and tomatoes, cabbages, potatoes, cucumbers. It all seems endless. When you take the time to grow some of your own vegetables and herbs and you give them all that TLC, you wanna be careful how you deal with pests. Let's face it, we're eating all of this produce, so I'm not interested in putting anything on my garden that's not safe because I'm going to consume it and share it with my family and friends. That's why I look for safe alternatives for dealing with problems in the garden. I take an organic approach. By doing this, I don't have anything to worry about. One natural product that I use is called neem oil. Neem oil comes from a tropical tree. And what you get in this is really a three-in-one punch. It'll take care of insects, fungal problems, as well as mites. As an insecticide, it can help control aphids and white flies. It takes care of black spot, certain kinds of rust and powdery mildew. And then as a miticide, it'll take care of those pesky little spider mites. Last year, they got all over my tomatoes, causing the leaves to become distorted and the plants to lose vigor. You know, when you garden and you're producing some of your own vegetables, you're always gonna have to deal with problems. I just wanna do it in the safest way I can. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm making some cool cucumber soup, some ratatouille from those tomatoes and eggplants, and some coleslaw from the cabbage, all summer favorites. Well, Nadine, I hope that little bit of information helps you with your vegetable garden. I'm really proud of you for starting to grow some of your own food and growing it organically. Okay, now we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, I want you to try this delicious strawberry and mint smoothie, so don't go away. You know, there's just something so refreshing about freshly gathered mint. What I'm creating here is a wonderful treat, something I love to create here at the farm particularly when strawberries are in season. But what I'm doing is I'm making a strawberry mint smoothie. Let me show you how to do it. What you wanna do is you wanna take a couple of cups of strawberries. I've washed them and sliced them, of course decap them. You wanna take a tablespoon of agave nectar, which is a natural sweetener. It's actually sweeter than honey. Mm, very good. And it's a vegan alternative to honey if you're a vegan. And what you wanna do is take about the same amount of minced rosemary leaves. I like a little extra, but one tablespoon's all the recipe calls for. And then just some ice. So I'm just gonna put in a handful of ice like this, maybe a half a cup. And then all you do is pop it in the blender and turn it on. Just blend it until well, it's smooth. After all, it is a smoothie. And then before the ice melts, you wanna pour it up in a glass like this. You can garnish it with a little bit of that fresh mint from the garden. By the way, we grow mint in containers here because it's such an aggressive grower. I don't want it spreading through all the beds. Pop in a straw and enjoy a delicious, healthy treat. If you enjoy any recipe using fresh strawberries, it's really easy to grow some of your own ingredients, principally those strawberries. You see, you wanna plant strawberries in a well-drained soil that's high in organic matter, and as soon as the ground can be worked in the spring, you can get them planted. 
they'll need full sun to produce the highest yields. I like to grow strawberries in lots of different ways. I grow them in raised beds. I'll have them planted out in the garden just in open beds and also grow them in containers. Now what you'll find if you buy strawberry plants that are already well established in peat pots, you can get them planted and you'll be able to produce berries the very first year. If you plant them bare root, it'll be the second year before you can expect any sizable harvest. Now remember, strawberries bloom very early, so they're susceptible to frost in the spring. You see, any kind of protection can really help, like a frost blanket or even putting a light layer of newspaper or mulches over them just to get them through a cold night will make a big difference. The great thing about strawberries is that they're perennial and they're gonna come back year after year, particularly if you let some of those little runners that come off with new plants get established because that's where you're gonna get the harvest the next season. Okay, now I want you to think about a companion plant for strawberries. I certainly love these in the kitchen. Mint is wonderful with strawberries and you can grow them in similar growing conditions. You see, mint also likes full sun. It can be quite a garden thug though, so you wanna be careful where you plant it. I like to grow it in containers or in a part of the garden where I don't mind it spreading because believe me, it will spread. Mint likes fertile, damp soil, and while it can be very vigorous on its own, it does appreciate an occasional feeding. Just like your strawberries, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you feed your strawberries in the very, very early spring, so there's plenty of food there for them when they begin to bloom, and you also wanna feed them again after the first harvest. Now, harvesting mint is really easy. All you're doing is clipping off the tips regularly, and you can pull up any runners that may be overreaching their bounds. You know, with strawberries, I love to take any extras that I have and freeze them so I can have them all year long. And with mint, I try to harvest it before it flowers and I can either dry the leaves or freeze the leaves in small batches. Well, that's it for today's show. Time has certainly flown by. I've enjoyed spending some time with you. Now, if you want any of the information in today's show, like that recipe for the strawberry and mint smoothie, just check it out on my website, pallensmith.com. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream Of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing Of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile